I thought I'd do a video on uh, how I mill up my lumber. Uh, so I'm going to start out by telling you that you got to cut the tree down or it blows down in a hurricane. In this case, these trees uh, came down uh, because I'm building a uh, carport for my trailer and truck. And uh, so I had to cut them down. And rather than turn them into firewood, I, I want to make them into lumber. Now, as soon as the tree gets cut down, you need to coat the ends with uh, a sealer. I use Anchor Seal. It's a wax emulsion. I can just brush it on. It's a water-based uh, product. This particular brush I've been using for years. It's all hard. As soon as I put it in the uh, emulsion and squish it around a little bit, it gets nice and soft. And then I can go ahead and coat the ends of the logs. Now, what you try to do is prevent the ends of the logs from drying out too fast. Uh, the sides of the logs are going to dry very, very slowly, but the ends they're like open soda straws, so they're going to try to dry fast. So you want to coat them right away. I found that paint really doesn't do anything. This anchor seal is real thick. I've already put it on, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do it anyway. I just go ahead and I brush it on real thick. It goes on white, and when it dries, it becomes clear. And when you feel it, it feels just like wax. I buy it in five-gallon uh, buckets, and uh, it lasts me a long time. So that's how I do it. And uh, this stuff works really good. Now there's a few things you need to mill up lumber other than uh, logs and anchor seal. Uh, first thing you need is a sawmill. So I've got a Woodmiser LT15. It's a 15 horsepower. I can put a 10 foot log on there. I think a max of about 28 inches in diameter. And uh, mill it up. It's a manual process pretty much. The, the, the blade moves by... Uh, by the engine but the rest of its manual but she does a nice job the other thing you need is a place to dry your wood now this is a drying rack uh, I guess a stack that I've, uh, I've made and uh, you can see that I've got some uh, four by sixes resting on cinder blocks everything is nice and level uh, leveled out very good and then I put cross pieces of, uh, of four by fours about every 21 inches or so uh, just to get a good uh, support and on top of that I'll be putting the stickers and stacking the lumber and we'll see that later. Uh, the other thing that's uh, real handy to have if you have it, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit, is a, a tractor. Uh, not everybody has one but I can tell you that picking up these logs is really tough to do by hand. Uh, it's a whole lot easier with a tractor. And the other thing I have is a uh, solar drying kiln. And I'll back up to get this in the shot. Uh, this kiln I built myself. Uh, it will hold about, uh, well, it'll probably hold uh, close to a thousand board feet. But uh, to, to be frank, I can't get that much sun here. So I, most I ever fill is about halfway, maybe 500 board feet max. Uh, it's a four, about, you know, hold a four foot deep stack by 10 foot long uh, by about, uh, you know, four or five feet high. And the way this works is uh, it's got a top that is clear points at the sun. It's a clear uh, uh, polycarbonate, same thing they use for eyeglasses. Sun comes on in there, the inside's all painted black, and I uh, got some fans to blow the air around, and uh, it'll dry the lumber very, very nicely, uh, and also it'll get hot enough to kill any of the powder post beetle larvae, which is very important uh, where I live. Now to get the mill ready to use, uh, one of the things I did initially was I checked the bed for trueness just to make sure it hasn't sagged. There's little adjusters here that I can adjust to make sure that the bed, bed is nice and level. Uh, next thing I gotta do is uh, put the battery in. And uh, a lot of times I'll find mice living in this mill. Once I even had to replace the ignition coil because the mice had eaten through all the wires. I got a bunch of pieces of uh, acorns here, so I think the mice have had a decent place to live through the winter in this battery compartment, which is fine with me as long as they don't eat the wires. I've got a battery here. I charged it up to make sure we had plenty of juice. And I'll just go ahead and connect it up. The other thing I've got to do is put gas in the tank. I go ahead and I drain the tank every time I use this mill so the gas doesn't go bad. 
just a matter of pouring it in. Also want to check the oil. Make sure there's plenty of oil in it. Nice and clean. We're in good shape there. This particular engine has an oil filter on it, which is a, a real nice addition. Okay, uh, before I put the blade on, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little greasing, a little clean up. Make sure that the, uh, the wheels are nice and clean. Pump a little grease into the guide rollers. These are what guide the blade. I use a little bit of uh, automatic transmission fluid to uh, lubricate the rails. Take the carriage slides on. And I lubricate the chain that uh, Controls the up and down motion. Remember, everything's manual on this. So the better lubricated the parts are, the easier it's going to be on my whole body. There's not a lot of sawdust build up on the uh, the wheels, the tires for the uh, for the blade. These tires, all they are, fan belts. They run loosely on a cast iron wheel. But if you get a lot of build up, you know, it's not real good for the blade. The tire will last longer if it's relatively clean. Okay, now it's time to put the blade on. <coughs> Get my greasing materials out of the way. You want to be a little bit careful when you're messing with these blades. They're pretty sharp. This first blade I'm putting on is the last blade I use at the end of the year. I think it still had a little bit more life on it. And they're pretty easy to change out. Okay, it's a regular bandsaw blade, so the first thing you do is you got to go ahead and fling it open. This is the part where you want to make sure you don't cut yourself. like putting the blade on any bandsaw except this is horizontal and the blade's a lot bigger. Okay, so get her about right. And then you bring up the tension which is a adjustment um, wheel over here. It's 
got a little uh, tension gauge to tell you when you've got enough tension on the blade. And I'll get, uh, I'm not going to go to full tension yet. I want to go ahead and just uh, run the blade in a little bit, make sure it's not hanging up on anything. So to do that, I take a little bit of tension off the uh, off the motor. So it will turn my hand a little bit. Just get the blade tracking on the wheel right so that I can then go ahead and increase the tension the rest of the way. And again, I said I have a little tensioning device over here that I'm looking at. It tells me when I got enough tension on the blade. And that ought to be pretty good. Make sure she's tracking good again. And it's tracking good on the wheels. This mill rarely needs adjustment. I have this mill now. I remember when I bought it, over 10 years ago, anyway, and uh, rarely needs a job, just keeps chugging along. Okay, so we got the blade on, we got everything greased up, we got gas in the tank, oil in the, in the engine, the battery's charged up. I filled up my water bottle here, which is used to lubricate the blade. Helps, uh, helps a lot to get the pitch off the blade while I'm running the saw. And I got my logs ready, so uh, we're pretty close to being able to start milling our first log. Now I'm going to get the logs onto the mill. And again, with uh, this particular mill, this is all done by hand. I'm using a tool called a TV. I think it's named after the guy who invented it. I'm simply going to roll the log onto the mill, try to get it where I need it. Okay, now it's on the mill. I gotta decide if it's in the orientation I want. The objective here is to cut a square beam called a cant. And once that's cut, then uh, I'll be milling the cant into the actual boards. Now, the other thing is, logs are generally thicker on one end than they are on the other, and so I'm gonna have to manually uh, shim up one end of the log. This particular end, uh, 15 inches bark to bark. Probably about uh, 14 inside the bark to inside the bark. On this other end, you can tell right now it's going to be thinner. The other end is about 14 bark to bark. So the object is to get the center of the log the same height. So that means I have to shim up that opposite end about a half an inch. Uh, so that the center of that log is seven and a half inches above the bed. I've got the log shimmed up so the centers are about the same height above the bed. I'm using these cam action clamps to clamp the log up against the uh, supports in the back. nice and tight. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the end of the log and try to calculate how much lumber we can get out of this. First thing I do is I just draw a real 
general shape of the cant. Just to get an idea of what it might look like. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure how high that is. It's about 10 inches. And I'll start the first cut probably about 13 and a quarter inches from the from the bed. And see how that looks. If I need to, I can come down a little bit. Okay, I've already made the first cut on the log and rotated it 90 degrees. And I made a mark where the second cut should be. And between these two cuts, it squares up the log so I don't have to shim anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and lower, lower the blade down to it's about 11 and a half inches or so. I've got a scale here. I can tell how high the blade is above the bed. Bring it on in there. That's about right. There'll be a little bit of wane, a little bit of bark on the ends of the exterior pieces, but that's not a big deal. We want to get the maximum yield. And I want to make sure my blade is nice and high above my supports. I didn't check for nails. If this was a log coming from someone's property, I'd have my metal detector out here looking for nails. But these logs came from the forest, and so I don't have to do that. <laughs> 